Welcome back to the channel and another playthrough of the Dungeoneer um, <clears throat> card game, Dungeon Crawling card game, a competitive version. Um, after last episodes, after last playthroughs, I went to BGG forums and I had a look on the solo variants of this game, but I didn't like any. I kind of um, enjoy the competitive aspect of this game, even though I'm playing on my own against myself, really. Then still, none of these solo variants appeal to me enough uh, for me to actually print it and, and play it. So I decided to, to try uh, and record one more playthrough of the Tomb of the Lich Lord box. This is the original, the very first one. The theme in this one appeals to me the most. Uh, so, um, yeah, we're going to go through that one more time. This time, um, we will be playing with Kron, the Dwarf Avenger. Uh, these are his uh, stats. 6 HP, as always, 4 loot cards and 1 boon. <clears throat> Avenge, pay 2 green to make a 3 melee attack against an opponent who attack you this turn. Get plus one to your attack limit once per turn. So it's like a three counter attack. Um, three counter attack uh, <clears throat> for Kron. D6 to uh, indicate his level and his HP. Um, he has two personal quests that we already drew before before uh, start before I started recording. Um, sacrificial offering. He needs to go to Throne of Tyranny. And to complete this quest, wound yourself with the tyrannize effect of the throne of tyranny. You will need to gain control of the throne to do this first. You have plus one to attempts to control the throne while you have this quest, which is quite good. If I remember correctly, this is not an easy quest to uh, to complete, especially in the beginning. Um, the other one is Rick's Curse. Um, this one requires well of healing. And in order for us to complete it, we need to discard a readied boon, which we can only have one of, or uh, permanently nullify your special ability, uh, Avenge. Oh, okay. There you go. So that's our uh, Dwarf Avenger. The other hero that we all pulled uh, randomly is a Paladin, Roderick. Right, healing hands is his special ability. On your turn, you may pay you may pay three green and one move to re to recover one health. Limit once per turn. Two loot, three boons. Oh, that's that's all right. Actually, that's quite all right. Um, our heroes will be represented by these painted miniatures. Uh, this is one of them. Okay. Uh huh. Right, and this is the other one. There you go. That's the other one. Um, paladin, our Paladin, and his uh, special, uh, not special, and his personal quests. One of them is Slay Drakey, the one that we saw in our pre previous playthrough. We need to find Inner Sanctum and kill this uh, baby dragon, right? And the other one is Catch of the Magic Fish, and we need to find a troll bridge for us to do that. We need to probably pass um, some sort of a test or something. Yeah, I suppose so. There we go. And the global quest that we have is the Escort Lost Magician. So again, we need to find both the Altar Sanctum and Library, collect him in the Sanctum and escort him to the Library. While we're accompanied by this Magician, we have a minus one to um, melee attacks. So there you go. <clears throat> this is our this is our global quest. Right. Before we continue, um, I, I'm I'm enjoying this game so much that I want to start playing with other boxes. These are two boxes that I chose um, to go ahead with in the first place, but I still can't decide <laughs> whether it's the ice witch in the mountains somewhere or the dragons on the, on the desert. So guys, if you prefer any of these, please let me know in the comment section below, and then we'll crack these open and do a playthrough after we complete this one. There you go. <coughs> that's, that's that. I think that's enough of me rumbling. Oh, and by the way, I rolled uh, two D6s to determine which of the heroes will 
be the first hero to activate and actually dwarf avenger chrome crook chrome yeah chrome he he uh he is the first one to go there we are so he enters the tomb <clears throat> he gains one green one red this will be easier for me to call it that way let me just make sure that you see everything on the camera you should be able to see everything on the camera uh we will um, put these two here to indicate his two move points right let's have a look at his cards what is it that he has he has two green cards belt of brawn two and five for mighty strike well quite expensive oh uh yeah we will do that in just a moment we will build the we will reveal the very first rooms but before we do that let's finish with uh with his cards so he has three green uh, red cards bad fagon zombie and poison needles quite nice actually only four uh peril required to activate all three and keep these two in my pack if they survive the fight it's actually quite a good opening hand unfortunately we don't have enough of anything uh we don't have any peril because the paladin hasn't entered the tomb yet so we'll just skip that <clears throat> The dungeon law phase in just a moment but before we do that let's reveal the cards okay so we have a grim junction with plus two threat to traps uh two, two threat traps yeah so there we go that's the first one let's have a look at this one oh look at that inner sanctum um vermins are half cost rounded up to play here okay inner sanctum mm. yeah there we go slay drakey <laughs> that's that's very good for paladin and we need the outer sanctum for the magician right let's have a look at this one. Oh, it's a turn and it cannot be positioned like this okay let's let's have a look what this one is oh it's a corner no it's also positioned in a wrong way so how about we swap this with that so that you know it can be done and then the only way we can do it is do it like this like that so i can go through here but i cannot go back because there is a block door so that's the way the cards work in this game <clears throat> okay so now, uh, the dungeon lord phase, which we already, you know, checked our cards and there's nothing that we can do yet. Now it's the build phase. So we draw a card, a dungeon card, and it's a crypt undead. Costs one less red to play here, minimum of one. Right. None of us, at least for now, we do not need that room to complete the quest. <sighs> so how about we put it... Let's put it here. Okay. Let's put it there. Now, are we going to move anywhere? Mm -hmm. How about we move? Um, how about we move uh, somewhere to gain at least one green so I can play the belt of brawn and equip it? That will give me plus one, two attack melee attack which is which is which is um very good for me shall i go to inner sanctum no let's um let's go here that will boost my red by two and my green by one so that's my move so that was the very first move i suppose i'll keep uh, shall I keep it? No, let's explore for the second move. Uh, and it's a summoning chamber. Demons cost one less red to play here. We don't need summoning chamber. No. Ha! So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to block off uh, the entrance to inner sanctum for the paladin to make it to make uh, to make it uh, more complicated for him. So he will have to go that way, and that will. Um, that will force him to go into that room and claim more red so that I can play some of these cards in my turn. So I spent two movement points. Now uh, it's hero phase. It's the end of my hero phase. So I can.
play the uh, the belt. This is the belt of, of brawn. It requires two green, so I'll, I'll spend my two green and equip it plus one melee. Right, that's it. That's all I can do. I have to discard one card, so I'll discard this mighty strike. I don't think there is any any chance of me using that anytime soon. So I'll discard it and put it to the side. Now I need to draw back to five. Right, we get two green cards. Boot of Alahazad. Uh huh. Allows me to be oh to have one more action. Oh, lovely job, lovely job. Yeah, and Ring of Arcana. Great, fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was um, Kron. That was his turn. Now the Paladin. He enters the tomb. So gains one and one. Okay. Now let's have a look at his cards. Okay. We have Blehu seven green blessing of Nakari. Your hero has plus one of everything. Ooh, that's nice actually. That's actually quite nice. <coughs> Ring of Luck three green. When uh, played, place two tokens on this card. At any time, you may remove one token to discard this card to re-roll one of your dice rolls. Ooh, that's nice. Misplace, opponent pays cost of target loot, or is, the loot is discarded. That's also quite nice. Gilded key allows me to open the locked doors, plus two to, op to open the doors. And unholy anger, oh, four, not enough. All monsters have plus one, and all undead plus two to all melee and magic attacks for the duration of this turn. Ooh, that's powerful. But, mm, Nothing special. Misplace. Haha! <laughs> I can make you get rid of this. Uh, I can make you get rid of this uh, belt of brawn. Are we going to do that just now? I think we might actually. Yeah, so I'm going to cast Misplace. Okay. On Kron. This will spend all three red points. Yeah. And will require Kron to pay the cost of the loot card, which is too green, he doesn't have any, or discard it. So, your belt is gone, mate. So no buffs for you, I'm afraid. There you go. That's all I could do. No more peril points. Okay. <clears throat> now we go through the build phase. Let's have a look. We draw. A troll bridge. Ah, look at that. This is exactly what I need. Um, <clears throat> ha! Oh, come on. Not like this. Um, this is uh, the troll bridge um, requires three green to enter this space or overcome five plus. If, if you fail, then you have to return to your previous space. <clears throat> I was thinking about placing it here, but since there is a black black space over there, it will block my inner sanctum off. So I will have to go two rooms more. So I think what I'm what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it there. Okay. So that was my build phase. Now hero phase. I have two movement points and I have Right, for my first movement point, I will go in here, uh, gain two green, three red. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Gilded key, blessings, ring of luck. <coughs> That's actually quite nice. <coughs> mm, I'm thinking about staying here for the turn. Playing this Ring of Luck, and then overcome threat five, two. Yeah, I'm going to stay here and keep this movement point for any counterattacks that might happen next turn. Mm -hmm. And now I will also spend my three green to equip this Ring of Luck. And I will put a uh, d6 with a 2 on it to indicate my two um, uh, uses of that ring before it expires. Mm -hmm. can't, can't play anything else. 
Mm -hmm. I can't play anything else. So we will go to uh, discard and draw. So I will discard this Blessing of Nakari, seven green, Whew, very expensive. So I will draw up to five. Death Shadow for five, quite expensive. Dimensional Shift and Budge. Nice, okay. So that was um, Paladin. Paladin. Now, <clears throat> let's have a look what we can do with our Dwarf. Yeah, shall we? Okay, so our Dwarf. Where is it that he needs to go? Throne of Tyranny and Well of Healing. Neither of them is, uh, is revealed right now. Um, let's do it like that. Two movement points. Okay, let's start with the Dragon Face. Uh, dragon Face. <laughs> Dungeon Lord phase, of course. Let's keep these for later. Threat Trap. Trap affects all heroes in the same space. Plus th two Threat Traps. What does that mean? What does that mean? What? what mm -hmm. Right, so I had to double check and I, I'm still <clears throat> not entirely sure because um, it says here plus two threat to traps. Um, some of the traps, they say threat uh, in addition to whatever the, um, the result for, for the success is on the trap. This one doesn't, for example. So I presume this uh, buff to threat traps does not apply because it's not a threat trap, if you know what I mean. I hope it's right. If it's not, then please let me know and we'll correct it for the next time. So anyways, I'm going to spend two peril points um, <clears throat> and um, set this uh, trap uh, in effect for, for the Paladin to try and avoid it. So we need seven plus. His natural is two. So he will roll the black one, so he needs five or higher, and it's a two. So what happens? Fail, inflict one wound, controlling player gets to give to any player. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do we want... Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, use our ring of luck and try it again. No, we fail. So five and one peril. Okay, so this trap um, sprung. And is discarded. Okay, now we have three peril points to uh, spend, and we're going to do just that first. We're going to summon Betfagen for one peril point, and Betfagen is a weak enemy, attacks with melee, uh, has one health, plus two to uh, melee. Same as no, it, it actually hits harder than the Paladin. <laughs> Look at that. A huge rat at that okay so as before red one is for enemies white die is for heroes let's roll and let's have a look oh, oof. that's a that's a hard hit isn't it so it attacks for eight I defend for three is it worth re-rolling or shall I take the damage or shall I take the damage I can counter-attack it because I have one movement point left. Oof. Yeah. That's that's bad, actually. No, let's take one damage. One barrel point back. So the bad Fagan will stay in the Dwarf's pack. Yeah, for later. Okay, and for another peril point, we're going to summon a zombie. Uh, again, quite similar to the Batfagon, attacks with melee, plus two, inflicts one wound. Um, I mean, not inf yeah, it inflicts one wound, but it also has one HP. So again, let's... Oh, sorry, that was four, isn't it? Let's do it again. Oh, now this time, five against three. So the zombie is defeated. Oh, I could have used my... Movement point. I will do it. I will do it. So I killed the zombie. Yeah. So I get one grace. 
one green point. Zombie is defeated. It doesn't go into the park. It had one HP and I defeated it. So I'm going to spend my movement point to counterattack the bad Fagen. Okay, so I'm going to counterattack with with my with my melee. Yeah. So one against two. Shall we do it? Yeah, okay. Woo, look at that. Six versus seven. And I defeated the Batfagen with my counter attack. And I get a second uh, a green point. Lovely. That was a good one. That was a good one. It, it, <laughs> I received two HP, uh, two wounds. But if I get one more, um, one more next turn, I can heal myself for one using my healing hands ability. That would be that would be great actually, and I still have one use of my ring of luck. That's good. Okay, back to the dwarf. Right. So that was the dungeon phase. Now the build phase. Let's have a look what we draw, and we drew a barracks. Mm -hmm. All monsters have plus one might here. Hmm. Ha! Let's put it there. So again, we block off the way for the paladin to uh, reach his uh, um, goal for the quest, the inner sanctum, to slay Drakey. <laughs> that's there you go. That was the build phase. Now the hero phase. We have two movement points, six HP left. Uh, we don't have any any points. So if we stay here, we still generate um, the points indicated by the the location card. I could go to summoning chamber. Hmm. No, I'll spend one to explore, hoping to find either Well of Healing or Throne of Tyranny. One of these. Nope. Instead, we found Grim Intersection. We found Grim Intersection. And I'm going to place it here. Yeah, some spikes. So what happens if I fall into spikes? They deal one damage or what? I think they do. Yeah. Or they slow me down. We'll have a look in just a moment. So we still have one more to... Hmm. Where do we want to go? Outer Sanctum is not here. Throne of Tyranny or Well of Healing. Neither of them are explored. So I'll stay and explore yet again. Outer Sanctum. There you go. That's what we wanted. We wanted to find the Outer Sanctum. Outer Sanctum. Where are we going to put you? We're going to place you here. Can you still see it on camera? Yes. The dungeon is getting larger and larger. Since we haven't moved, we will generate two peril points and one grace point. <coughs> Now we go to um, hero phase, uh, to the end of the hero phase. We can play some cards. We cannot because we... Event one magic wound. I will discard the Ring of Arcana. Okay, draw four cards. One, two, three, four, up to five. And we have some red cards. Demonic Adder, ooh, strong opponent. And the Wraith. Oh, quite expensive at that. Nice, nice drawings. We have disarm traps. Nice. If we find any traps, we have plane shifted. Relocate target occupied dungeon map card to any legal location. Ooh, you may also rotate it. That's nice. And the boots of Alahazad. Right. So that's the end of uh, dwarves activation. I suppose we will kick things off with um, with um, t -t -t with our paladin. Our paladin. What is it that you can do, mate? We would like to go to this um, troll bridge to catch the fish and complete a quest and level up. But can we actually do that? Um, we have <coughs> we have um, how many peril points? Two peril points to spend. I uh, can't do these. We can do the dimensional shift. Relocate target unoccupied dungeon map card to any legal location. You may also rotate it. Aha! So I might 
relocate this. Yeah, I will. So I'm going to spend his two red, uh, two red points to cast the Dimensional Shift. It's an instant shift spell. Relocate target unoccupied dungeon map card to any legal location. <laughs> like that. So I'm hoping to... Oh, forgot to reset. I'm hoping to find library so then I can escort the Lost Magician. And all my three quests for the Paladin are within reach. Reasonable reach. So this gets discarded, of course. Now, is there anything else we can play? No. Maybe we will be able to play the Gilded Key or do something else with our... With our... Hmm. I need three pair of free green to heal myself. I only have two. If I go in there, I would have to um, pass threat five. Plus five plus. If not, well, it doesn't... It doesn't... It doesn't uh, deal any damage. So I will spend one movement point to go in there. No green, one red. Yeah. Then I have to pass the threat five. My move is, my speed is two. So I need three plus. Okay. To stay in there and undertake the, the quest. Six. Well done. So I stay in there. I don't have to pay anything. And then I can... Um, undertake this quest and the very first time you you uh, attempt the quest you can do it for free you don't have to spend movement points any subsequent uh, tries require movement points there you go catch of the magic fish chance heroic quest there you go to complete this quest roll five plus on one die while on the troll bridge you may pay two i have to uh -huh. as many times as you choose to roll one additional die on an attempt Choose highest die roll. Each attempt uses one move, right? Additional. Fable style of magic fish that bestow great powers. If you can get past the troll that protects them. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So I need five plus and I still have one. <coughs> Let's have a look. Let's try it. Six. Yeah, that again. So we completed the quest. We gain one level. We gain, we recover, we gain one green and we recover one HP. So we're level two now. We leveled up. So we have completed our very first quest for the Paladin. Uh, we still have, oh, let's have a look. Hang on, hang on. We didn't have to spend our magic ring. We have the gilded key. Mm. Shall I spend and heal myself? Or go back and claim two more. Do I really want to do that? No, I will keep the last move point just in case I need it for some counter attacks. If the dwarf happens to uh, summon any enemies uh, to. Um... Oh, I think I skipped. Yeah, I was so excited that I skipped a build phase. Sorry for that, guys. Let me correct that. So, it's Well of Healing. There you go. Well of Healing. I will put it there. Okay, then I should have gone to my hero phase. Uh, and I should have done what, I just, what I've just done. Went into the troll bridge and um, finished the quest. So that would complete my um, hero phase. Now... We need to discard something. Death Shadow. Ooh, Unholy Anger. I think I will discard the Unholy Anger because that requires me to have a lot of red points. Not only to summon some enemies, but also to cast this. So I'll just um, get rid of it for now. I need two more cards to draw up to five. And this is what we have. We got Spell Focus. Yeah. Uh, your hero has plus one magic attack. Mm, okay. And Banis, our mercenary. Oh, look at her. A very nice lady who can defend me. And she will. She can sacrifice herself uh, for one damage. So, very good companion. What is it that we need? We need three. So, next turn, we will be able to um, summon her to accompany us. 
Right, so, okay, so that's the end of the Paladin's turn. Right, so this is the beginning of a new turn for Kron, but before we do that, I suppose we will stop this episode right here and we will kick things off um, in, the, in, the next, uh, in the next episode uh, very, very soon. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little playthrough of Tomb of the Lich Lord, Paladin versus Dwarf Avenger. This is our final run for Tomb of the Lich Lord, after which we will be playing either the Dragons of the Forsaken Desert or the Realm of the Ice Witch. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next episode shortly. Bye!